Hello, I'm Lux. And this is Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 5 and 6. So, what are your thoughts? Other than, oh my god, tuxedo mask! And holy kick-ass Jupiter! Yeah, that uh, waiting for the next episode is going to be very difficult. Because Makoto is my favorite of the Inner Scouts, and we've already established I'm a huge Tuxedo Mask fan. So to get an episode focusing on Jupiter, and then get an episode mostly focused on Tuxedo Mask... Just some fun stuff ahead for you, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, you saw the preview for the next episode, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but more importantly, let's go back to the beginning of the two episodes and start with Makoto. Sailor Jupiter, right? Yes. Okay, I'm just, you know, used to the American names. That's because it's the only version I ever really watched. <laughs> You're forgiven. <laughs> hey, I'll be watching new ones. If I'm pre-ordered and everything. My bank account. Yeah, so we keep some of the key important, air quotes, important scenes from Sailor Jupiter joining the team in the first anime versus this one. We have everyone being afraid of Jupiter. We have Serena thinking she's neat, loving her cooking, being oh. totally awed by her. I, I love that scene where she's like peeking over the bench. That food looks so good. And then kind of like sitting over there, um, just kind of looking and Jupiter's like, so you want some? Yes! I mean, yes. Um. I mean, um, but it's yours. Oh, no, I can't stop my hand. <laughs> like, yeah, and people were, like, worried that Serena wasn't going to be Serena when it came to food. Um, <laughs> some really people were look looking at the preview going, she doesn't have toast in her mouth. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> so? <laughs> not a big deal. It's not like that happened all the time in the manga. Remember, Sailor Moon Crystal is a version that's trying to stay more true to the manga rendition. So, please continue with your thoughts. <laughs> well, I'm very glad that Usagi has an established love interest in this story because the way she's drawn to each of the Sailor Scouts, you sometimes have to wonder if she's bi, because she's like, that girl's so pretty. Wow, she smells nice. <laughs> like, really? Usagi, <laughs> do you have any filters? Yeah, I, I, rem I remember noticing that. I was like, wait, what? that's weird. Like, she's so pretty. She smells good. And I'm like, so are you um, looking for Sailor Scouts or looking to pick up some people? What? <laughs> and apparently um, in the next episode, I'll hit on real quick. That's like her part of her abilities is to sense other Sailor Scouts. And that's why she finds herself like finding something interesting about them. I'm like, yeah, you can find something interesting about them other than how they look or how they smell. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's probably something about them that resonates with her past life memories. And I love how each Sailor Scout's awakening is a little bit quicker. Jupiter didn't need to be told how to use her transformation pin, or what planet she was, or the name of her attacks. It was, alright, you are telling me that I'm a fool for being in love? Alright, bring it on, I'll show you. <laughs> Ooh, transformation stick. Okay, Sailor Jupiter, I transform and I attack you. And I attack you again. With two different attacks. Mm-hmm. And yes, Nephrite, you should be worried. The the lady is implied to be your love interest. I finally did the research. <laughs> there are two with canonical evidence and there are two implied. In uh, one of the bonus pages of the original manga, each of the scouts is drawn being held by one of the Dark Kings, but only Venus with Kunzite and Jadeite with Mars are, air quotes, official canon. Nephrite with Jupiter and Zosite with Amy are implied. Though, speaking of how quick things went, I feel the pacing on the Jupiter episode was a little bit quick near the end. They almost went a little too fast. But other than that, I like the episode overall, especially the whole little weird lunch scene with Usagi and Sailor Jupiter where she was like, food? <laughs> <laughs> I think this one would have benefited from being able to be just a couple minutes longer because it got to the climax rather quickly. You know, 
we got plenty of hints and of, you know, the ghost bride and missing uh, groomsmen. And then we very quickly have two people fall victim. Uh, Makoti and Makota. Wow, that is hard to say together. <laughs> now, I'm going to go with his nickname. Furu-chan <laughs> from Crown Game Shop and Sailor Jupiter both drawn into the power very quickly. But then we get to that excellent moment of Mamaru noticing that there's a problem and going to fetch Usagi. Yeah, that was awesome. Like, uh-oh, I better go and get someone who actually has power. Mm -hmm. Which is a great lead up to him confessing to Usagi in the next episode that he doesn't have any special powers. Which is something that comes up in the coordinating story arc in the manga because he starts people looking for the silver crystal and yes i just transitioned to the next episode but it gets out of control and he isn't able to stop it so he has to rely on the sailor scouts to do it because he doesn't have the power to stop it leaving out that later on he does develop power and that he does have some slight power at this moment you know the power that's letting him recognize the situations and he's traditionally had a touch of healing power and his powers unlike the sailor scouts are invocable whether or not he's transformed hmm. and speaking of stuff to do with the sailor scouts more new items specifically the crescent moon wand or whatever it's called in this version yes which they very obviously point out as sailor venus having in the game but did you notice that the meter at the top of the screen is Tuxedo Mask's watch and that the watch chain stretches out from it and there are four different icons along the watch chain which if I looked up the color of the stones might correspond to Zosite, Kunzite, Jadeite, and Nephrite. No, I did not notice that. Good catch. <laughs> well, the watch is kind of a special item for Tuxedo Mask. You know, he carries around this broken pocket watch which falls into Usagi's hands after he kisses her mm -hmm. and ends up in his apartment. Yeah, this is one of those moments where um, maybe it would have been better to take her home. I mean, you've already proven you can get into her window. <laughs> yeah, and for those people who thought he's creepy in this version, this just added a whole new level. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, at least she didn't wake up with him in the bed with her, and at least when she woke up, he wasn't topless. And she was still fully clothed. Mm -hmm. Also, kudos to the animators for not giving an upskirt shot when he was carrying her after she fainted from using all her energy. Because being carried that way, there's no way her skirt would have stayed up on the underside of her body. And speaking of upskirt shots, notice there are like none in this version. The only time you actually see anything that could be considered that is when Sailor Moon transforms. Because there's a portion of it where she's not, she doesn't even have a skirt at all. That's the only point you see anything that could be considered that. Everything else, they do a great job of hiding it, unlike the first version where it was like every five seconds in a fight scene, their skirt was being blown up by something. <laughs> yeah. Which I didn't notice when I first watched it when I was younger. <laughs> Me either. Still don't even always notice it now. It's like I just tune it out. But I really love the interaction between Usagi and Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask in both of these episodes. In the first one where if Usagi really thought about it and Luna put the pieces together kind of going, Tuxedo Mask, did you lead Usagi here? That implies that he knows who you are. And then he totally gives it away this time when he's like, what are you waiting for? She's like, you know, <laughs> go. Yeah, they're doing a great job of the interaction between those two and building up the um, kind of old feelings for them again kind of scenarios. Like they feel something toward each other and they're slowly like building off of that again, as it were. I like the symmetry um, with both times where Tuxedo Mask caught her, both as Usagi and as Sailor Moon. It was almost the same place on the road and both times she starts to fall over, he reaches for her outstretched hand to keep her from falling and then catches her as she fully collapses. I think if we looked at that closely enough, they probably were able to reuse some of the footage and actually just make the adjustments to Usagi's outfit to change it to the Sailor Moon one. Mm. 
I also like the scene where um, everyone goes, wait a minute, are you falling for Tixia Mask? Think with your head, girl, not with your heart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he may, be a, he may be a bad guy. Yeah, and it's like, it's like, no, you don't understand. He's always saved me. I'm like, that's a pretty good argument, but you still shouldn't have run out. Also, yay, first time everyone gets to be in the command center. I also like the hint for Sailor V showing up next probably in the next episode somewhere near the end or in the following episode because they show her as this um shadowy figure in the background with a slightly different outfit which is kind of nice considering based on the original material it came from and even before Sailor Moon I believe Sailor V had her own manga before Sailor Moon was even introduced yeah Sailor V it's two volumes and it was done before Sailor Moon, and so I think the artist reincorporated elements of Sailor V into the Sailor Moon arc. If you look, you can actually see Naru and Usagi in the Sailor V manga in the backgrounds. I just like how the outfit's different on her, so it shows that she is like this separate character that already has had powers for a while. But we can see from the opening that she's not going to stay in that. That she is going to transition to a, a traditional Sailor Senshi outfit. But I like that they have her in the Sailor V outfit. And I like that they show her kind of watching over them. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I, I don't know if his name is the same in both, but Artemis? It is. And that always bothered me because Artemis is the name of a moon goddess. <laughs> And I know there usually aren't very many masculine things associated with the moon, but it always struck me as very feminine. And one of the things I wondered when watching the English dub of the original for the first time was if they made Artemis male and he was originally female, since they did so much other gender bending. But no, they just went with the moon sounding name. Well, we kind of need to touch on the climactic battle scene. We've seen how with each of the kings, one scout can manage to mark them, and then when the next king shows up, the same scout doesn't stand a chance. Because when Amy first used her mist, it was effective. But the second time, it wasn't, and we needed Ray's fire. Last episode, Jupiter marked Nephrite, so we've used all the available accurate attacks so you know the three had already kind of maxed out and so of course it was time for sailor moon so we needed a new attack to go up against a king because all the attacks have previously proven effective which means they can't be effective again and we also get to see the loyalty air quotes there poor guy's brainwashed of zoocyte in shielding queen barrel from the moon healing escalation attack also, what a name. Moon Healing Escalation? <laughs> blink, blink. <laughs> yes, well, you know, how sometimes rather odd words are picked from the English language for use in Japanese media. Boomerang. Frisbee. <laughs> but yeah, it was a nice for me battle, especially when Barrel comes out and everyone goes, oh, bugger. <laughs> yeah, everyone goes, we are totally dead. We're already dead down we don't have enough power where's sailor moon we probably still wouldn't have enough power but then at least we die together <laughs> <laughs> i think i was like dang it gotta leave I, I almost have like this weird thing that um i should say i almost have this weird theory that zoocyte is like going to wake up and be different now because <laughs> it really wasn't it's not really an attack it's healing <laughs> yeah which would imply more of a purification so Maybe we finally get the Dark Kings starting to wake up and get their memories as well? Yes, that's what I was thinking. What do you think about that? I think it's very interesting, because the main reason that the Moon Healing Escalation attack takes out the lower level creatures is because they're constructs of evil. And so when you heal that, there's nothing left. But the Four Kings were originally good, so there's material to work with. It's kind of like being hit with elements of harmony. Maybe a little bit. And going on with side changing, I'm wondering if the series is going to play out long enough that we're going to get the evil prince Endemon 
slash Moonlight Night arc. I think we're going to get evil Tuxedo Mask, as it were, but not the Moonlight Night, because I'm pretty sure the Moonlight Night was, like, later, and it was part of a filler arc. Well, the Moonlight Night was the part of Mamoru's spirit that managed to resist Queen Beryl's brainwashing. So, while Darian's Mamoru... Sorry, I haven't watched that section in Japanese, so the English names come to mind. So, as the prince, he's brainwashed, but the pure part of him that is completely loyal to his moon princess becomes the Moonlight Knight. And I think you're also thinking maybe a little bit of the Dark Lady arc, where Rini goes evil. Mm, no, I'm thinking of Tuxedo Mask dressed up in white clothes, throwing a dagger with a um, Snow White flower on it. Rose, I should say. Yeah, as I recall, the two were kind of simultaneous, but I may be messing up the timeline. Because I do know we have a whole section that's actually in the manga where Darren goes, Darren, <laughs> Mamoru, whatever his name is, Tuxedo Mask <laughs> goes evil. <laughs> mm-hmm, because that happens in both the manga and the original, and I want to say that Moonlight Night was part of the manga, but I'd have to reread because... You know, once you get six or seven volumes in, Sailor Moon gets kind of out there. Especially at the end with the Sailor Stars arc, I'm like, I'm not sure I even understand this, and I'm a grown-up now. Uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal episodes five and six. And if you have, please consider subscribing and or leaving a friendly comment below. If you like Lux's artwork, Please follow me on Tumblr and watch me on DeviantArt. Links in the description.